Three mere mortals discover their ability to create entire universes with their minds alone. Upon discovering their abilities, these three, mm, gods if you will, join forces to create the Dark and Stormy Nights, a supercharged team of creatives with the aim of helping artists and writers around the world while combating the forces of boredom and mundanity. They are the Dark and Stormy Nights. <laughs> Welcome back to the Dark and Stormy Nights. I am joined today by Odin. Say hello. <laughs> hello. And by Tear. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> we have another fun episode for you today. We are going to talk about, well, a few things. Uh, a few writing hurdles I personally have, and I know a few others have had, because, well, I've talked to some of you, and this is what you tell me is an issue. Uh, I, as a person uh, with many bad relationships under my belt... Uh, I'm terrible at writing things like romance and love, right? I mean, because, well, what the hell do I know if I can't get it right, right? So, uh, this kind of sucks, right? Uh, what do you guys think? Tier, what do you guys... About romance in general or about reading romance? Well, what's your personal experience with romance? Huh. Sort of in the real world, romance is, is bullshit. It's meant for fiction, and I think that's where it should stay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, no, real life experience with romance, not so awesome. Um, yeah, I think that, that, um, it's, it's something that's nice to read about because in a fictional world it's kind of controlled. You can have two characters with the same level of emotional intelligence and you can see, you know, something work out. I have never seen a, that. In a good way for once. In real life? No, it no, doesn't no. exist in real I, life. Not even in fiction. <laughs> Because, I mean, I don't know, I read a lot of sci-fi personally, especially older sci-fi, which I guess is worse because the stuff I read is back from when the culture was really misogynistic. I mean, I'm You mean the aware. princess on the moon kind of stuff? So, oh, yeah, all kinds of ridiculous <laughs> stuff. I mean, these, these are tropes from back in the medieval days that they're using in early... The lady warriors of Neptune? <laughs> 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 Boobs everywhere, you know, because this is how it is, right? But, uh... Yeah, it's I don't know, uh, I, but I'm I'm yet to see like a, a realistic, uh, healthy romance in anything I read. I have read a few. I will tell you, I've read a few. Please do uh, inform. Do you have any a, a suggestion for a book with a healthy romance in it? Oh Lord, um, yeah. You want to know what though? It's much easier, at, in my experience, um, with the books that kind of pop up for me. It's much easier to find a, a healthy gay romance than it is to find a male-female romance that's a healthy relationship, well, which is kind of messed up. I, I, I got a question now. Is that a love story, or is it a story about something else that has a love backstory? Oh, most of that's the romance fair. stories that I read have, like, other stories, but there are some that are just romance, and that's specifically what I'm talking they, about. Like, when it's specifically romance, I have found more male-male gay romance books that have healthy relationships than I have found with female-male Are these written by women? Yes. See, that women. makes sense to me. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Because uh, I, I... I just think women are, on average, probably more emotionally equipped to, maybe, to but write I've realistically also, about such things. I've also this seen true, women wear seen... some of the most unhealthy oh, yes, relationships. Oh, yeah, I agree. Some of the very terrible male-female relationships. I shouldn't say terrible. There's a lot of I tension. mean, Fifty Shades of Grey was written by a woman. Oh, uh, yeah. But no, these are books and, that are having Yeah, but that's like, erotica. Tension, maybe and an interesting story. Their erotica's weird. No, but, but unhealthy yeah. relationships. And I have to be yeah. honest with you. Yeah, he, that dude was lot. not... Mysterious. He was just a dick. Yeah, yeah, he was an asshole. No, but there's a lot of like female relationships, and I, and I hate it. It's one of my biggest pet peeves with reading a story, and it is the fastest thing to get me to go. I hate your character, and I don't give a shit if you. Right. If they, I hope they break <laughs> up. I do not want to see romance here. <laughs> well, the reason too. I had asked the question was I don't think I really see a believable um, love under uh, B plot in a story that is got something else going on. It's usually uh, yeah. just tacked on. It like, does get you know, like in over speed. a lot, but no, I'm waiting. You know, what do you what do you have? In, what's a good suggestion? It's always a token. Even if it is a gay relationship, I think it still gives an idea for those who may be not into that uh, uh, how to write it. If you read something, uh, a good one, because that's the hard part, right? I think a lot of us writers, we 
we learn to write the kind of things we want to write from um, reading things. Yeah. Right, and I don't think there's a lot I of examples. I right. book that has, like, a main story and then a, and a romance, like, in there. Because you kind of want to see things work out for the character, right? Yeah. I, mean, um, I would say one writer where I've seen her write a couple of, of decent stories where there are healthy relationships would be um, uh, Jamin Eve is a writer. She's written about... Um, a couple of different series and I feel like her relationships were mostly pretty pretty healthy relationships um and one of the ones that I've, I've read where it's like solely a romance relationship with the gay romances um is a J.M. Dabney has written like a couple of series and those are um like happy healthy relationships where the characters didn't you know spend half the book treating the other character like crap and that is like I said, one of my biggest pet peeves in reading, like, a, a male-female I'm so tired of the Twilight Triangle. Yeah, but no, it's, it's it, like... That's unhealthy. And that's not fair. Oh, well, yeah. Why, why is it uh, the girl's always uh, uh, always set up to be this weak, indecisive person uh, who doesn't know what she really wants? That happens in real it's life so to me. It's so frustrating. I'm like, bye. Move yeah, on. exactly. No, 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 no. Choice is me. A woman's strength is not measured by how much crap she can put up with from a man. I am so sick of seeing that. Well, and a man doesn't win a girl from another guy or anything like that, you know? Love triangles are a big no-no no for me. Gross. Oh, don't get me wrong. I'm good with Oh, coffee. a lot of guys go through that in their teenage well, years, well, but I mean, you're supposed to all grill that thought. Yeah, it's really you're right. not supposed to write that if crap. If there are three characters involved in a love triangle, there better end up being a poly relationship there, because Seriously. otherwise I don't want to And I don't have a problem it. with a poly relationship. No, I'm good with poly. Uh, I write aliens that th thrive on poly relationships. I have written, yes, I yeah. have written... Yeah, I, I don't really want to share with Jacob like or Edward. Well. No, thank you. You don't know how these aliens live. They can have a very good relationship in the family. Uh, th that's... Uh, I, you know what? I, and, and I don't know. It's not a romance or anything, but I want to give a shout out. Actually, to I don't it. think I want the girl either. Do she only had like a emotion. The relationship know? in yeah. Ant-Man 2 between Ant-Man and his family, his ex-wife and the... And yeah. The, oh, the, yeah, the, yeah. That was a really nice thing to see. The I way think, that yeah, it all that worked was out. Cute. Very non-toxic, you know? Uh, so yeah, I, yeah, I like oddly that. supportive. Yeah, You're right. I appreciated that. They so. built up to that a little, though. I loved yeah, yeah, that the new did. husband kept giving him hugs and stuff. Right, right. Like that. <laughs> that was so cute. So, and, and I'm not very good about that kind of thing. And it's just like you know, not not that. Uh, I, I just I don't know. I don't like being touched by a bunch of people. So it's like eh, I'm, I'm not sure how I feel, but good for Scott. Yeah, I thought it you was know? cute. So uh, I don't know. Would it, do you get anything else? <clears throat> For relationship pet peeves, I mean that was pretty much it. it was you know, I'm I, like semi abusive relationships are way too common in romance. I agree. Novels. I agree. Well, I, I not I, physically I abusive. I don't read a lot of romance but, or whatever, but definitely uh, in a lot of what I have read is very unhealthy relationships. Seem yeah. very prevalent. And as far as what Odin was saying about like it being kind of like a subplot to a, a like another storyline, I have seen that, and I it's, I've never seen it done well. It's no, always no, like no. It was, and you win this romance yeah, and like happiness after, ever after. We didn't really talk about it well. No, but it's and, frustrating. Right, like, right, on right. one hand, I'm like, well, I, I've they like each other because I wrote that. that. Yeah, right. it's like it doesn't feel earned. Yeah, That's you, what I'm you, saying. You mean, you a realistic know. earned That's relationship. That's not even my issue. My issue is like there's this one story going on here with like this, you know, fantasy, science fiction, whatever it is, and I'm like, okay, I want I want to see what happens here, and then they've got this awful relationship, and right. I'm like. Do I close the book? Do I find out what happens? <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, a bad relationship is, like, the first thing for me to go, uh, I don't need to read a book for this. This is all over in reality, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen too many bad relationships in real life, and then on paper, almost more, you know? Yeah, it's just I like, know. Well, I was more just addressing the unrealistic, and I don't know, there's, like, you're reading it, there's no emotional investment. Right. There, it, it just... Uh, that there's no real tension. Well, like you could tell the, that the writer really has no idea how this works. Where, yeah, I, they I, just threw two. It's like they're mashing, you know, like I two action it, figures into each other. There is chemistry. Just kiss plastic figures. You know. <laughs> right. Oh, are we talking more like love at first sight and well, like? No, just, any, I don't know it, any I, of it. Yeah, but love at first sight. I don't know. Bad. Just romance my brain. Love Make it, me believe this is real. I love at first like sight is lost. Be, there's no such thing. Love, as love at first, first sight is. It, it feels like you're cheating a lot of the time to me. It, it, it's it, it, bullshit. When you're writing it, like, first of all... I mean, lust can turn to love, but yeah. Lust, no, no, yes. No. Lust is one thing. Right. You see I mean, someone you want to see you somebody be like, them. I know I love them. Oh, How would yeah. you know? You've never talked about I mean, about it, was fine, yeah. it was fine in The Princess <laughs> Bride, because that's, that's the story it was oh, telling, and that's fine. But, I mean, yeah, if you're telling a story that's meant to be slightly realistic, even if it has werewolves or whatever, yeah, no. 
No, I agree. I'll buy the werewolves over for Love at First Sight. I'll be honest with you, though. I'm right. It could happen. You know, uh, no, uh, not Love at First Sight. The werewolves. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Because uh, I only saw, you know, you only knew them after the fact. Uh, was the pilot and his wife in um, uh, Serenity. Um, oh, yeah. Okay. Wash and his wife were very much in love, and I think they had a great relationship. But, it, it, have you, but you didn't see the build-up or anything like that, you know? I, it was did you in the TV show? The married, no, no, no. Yeah. They, they were already married at the time that the whole thing starts. But that's the thing, is you don't really know how it all started. Now, I, I think I, that, They still had a cute demand at, uh, 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 um Dynamic. Yeah, you know, yeah there was no, a lot of uh, like banter back and forth. Right, like, but you I had no history, yeah, so yeah, how it built up. Cute. Okay, but, I do like seeing the build up, though. I mean, I feel like that's half the fun in a romance, right? Is seeing how it starts. I don't know if they were yeah. a romance well, or just characters. Was wrong with, but yeah, was, yeah, uh, it's a relationship. I only brought them up because I was breaking my brain trying to think of a romance <laughs> that looked healthy. Yeah. And that's the only one I can okay, think of is the one that's already is, built. And healthy. I feel like it's actually really basic as far as like writing your characters to have a healthy relationship. And it is the bottom line is they both need to freaking respect each other and want what's best for each other. Now, yeah, that's the that other one I see a lot. Not necessarily the case in the beginning. If you're going to be building tension and, and maybe have it like drawn out a little bit. Sure, there's going to be a little bit of back and forth, a little bit of, I don't want this to happen, or I'm not doing relationships right now, or like whatever it is that's going to keep your, your characters apart at first, or keep the tension building as they come together, that's fine. But the bottom line is, at the point that they are in a relationship, there needs to be a mutual respect, there needs to be trust, and there needs to be, you know, a general caring for the other character. Right, yeah. Yeah, it's just, yes. Yeah, so much selfish shit. No, yeah. I, I've seen it often enough where the uh, wife is a foil to his dreams or ambitions or whatever, being oh, the Neo yeah, yeah. or whatever he's got to be. You know, it's not, it's not like the, it, it, that she's playing the Trinity that moves with him. She She's more like an obstacle that he has to overcome to, I am to kind of save sick the world to do a thing. significant other as a plot device, you know, where it, rather than a person. You know, yeah, that's like, kind of what I'm saying. You know, yeah, she's a nag and she holds him back and he loses it one day, or you know, like, yeah, or he has to save them, you know, because they're co completely incapable beings on their own. You know, oh, that yeah. I I cannot stand that everybody loves Raymond uh, mechanic that was in sitcoms for a straight decade, uh, yeah. and all the commercials were guys are just inherently idiots. And we, we, we wouldn't right. be able All guys to are dumb. All women are bitches. That, that, that's, you, that's the thing. It's 90s like, sitcoms. They're super capable and they know all things, but they're mean about it. Right. <laughs> yeah, that, I mean, but that's, yeah, that's what all that teaches that, you, right? Yeah, that's, that's what's been portrayed in TV. If, if, I'm serious. You're not like, wrong. Or the new thing in sci fi, and I got to admit, one of the sci fi's that, that, that use this, I really like, though, is where the, the girl's, you know, really capable but somewhat naive, and the guy's a scoundrel or something like that, and then he's got a, the repentant scoundrel, and the, you know, whatever. Well, that's you. the redemptive arc, and that's it, the bad yeah, boy. But then you always have to sacrifice the guy. You know, like it never, it's never going to work out. The guy's always going to be sacrificed. You know, that's I'm just, okay with that. We should sacrifice more men. I mean, more, <laughs> more people in general. Unless it's a Han Solo movie. So, yeah. Spoiler! I kid. Um, yeah, no. I mean, there's there's a lot of, of characters that definitely miss the mark, I think. In general. Like, not just in I'm romance. I'm sure you think the more we... Not just in relationships. There's just, there's just a lot of characters that kind yeah, of miss the mark. The more we talk about this, the more I'm thinking that very few people actually know how to write a healthy romantic relationship. Well, part of them I've, might be I've writing read, what you know in Hollywood, you know. I don't yeah, think anybody knows. I've read a lot, but I mean, but yeah, there is an equal number of, of crappy Well, and a lot of stuff I've seen passed off as romance, and I don't, like I said, I don't read a lot of romance, but a lot of what I've seen passed off as romance is really erotica. You yeah. Know? It's not really romance, it's, it's erotica. So, Okay, know. so what do you think, what do you think, like, the character dynamic between two characters in a good relationship requires well see for for me to I, make it a, a good relationship and, and that you want to read about maybe this is why i haven't had one <laughs> is because i think to have a healthy good relationship you should be like best friends you know and i i'm not sure that's a one thing that anybody wants to read about you well, know? that's what i was thinking is maybe the reason that you're not seeing a lot of it is that if somebody's happy they don't have a lot of motivation to go through change and accomplish a goal in an arc of a story. Right. They're not going to save the world if they're comfortable at home. Right. 
So that might be part of it. I don't know. I don't know. I think in general your fiction needs to not reflect reality. <laughs> <laughs> right, because so maybe we're that's doomed. That's the whole point. If we're writing about real relationships, no one wants to read that. Well, no, I, mean, every, I mean, everything in a book is just spoken amped. like a true bitter well, I mean, woman, this is, right? This is America <laughs> with the divorce rates as high as we've got. I know. You know, a um, real relationship is probably somewhat abusive on one side or the other. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Like, I feel, I feel like the best romances that I have read about. Um, it's it's got characters that can play off of each other in a way that makes them perfect for each other you know like where one character has some kind of um personality trait or something it just fits with the what the other character like needs your kidneys a match so not, I, I think your example so <laughs> of the uh the, the the crew in serenity is actually a very good one because it very much fits that dynamic. They had different roles on, on the ship. Yeah, yeah, they were all different complimentary strengths. in their own they way. Had di- they had different behavioral traits, you know, like the one was trying to be chill, but he's, like, angsty, and, he, you know, she was more or, you know what, competent I've, I've and focused. I've seen it actually, this is a good place to pull in sex, because I've seen it actually a lot in, like, um, books that have, like, a, a dom-sub relationship. It's like sometimes there's, like, um, a sub-character who kind of, feels like their life is out of control and they kind of need someone to help them feel structured yeah yeah and um yeah so i mean sometimes you see it in like that kind of that was just the most obvious way that i could think to put it into words but yeah like sometimes you see that kind of place sometimes it's just personality sometimes it's just you know character traits or whatever but yeah i need a leather daddy in my story go for it <laughs> everybody needs a leather daddy in their story <laughs> <laughs> Odin's shaking his head. Yeah, I, I, I don't see but where that works the, for okay, me. But you I know. should clarify, like the healthy kind of sub dom relationships, not like the Fifty Shades kind of. Well, I think we more the more secretary. Examples. Wait a minute. Well, even the that. secretary is slightly unhealthy. Uh, well, it starts off I that like, way, but they actually get to a good place towards the end of the movie. Sure, but it shouldn't have started that way. Yeah. Well. So yeah, I know it's easy to criticize. But nonetheless, I do think we need more examples of good relationships. But I think we need more positive relationships, including BDSM and uh, and gay relationships or what have Absolutely. you. These all need representation here, uh, and it's hard. And, and especially with the new trend of people bashing writers for writing things that maybe they aren't personally experiencing. You know, uh, that that's kind of bugging me. It's just oh, like, you mean like like uh, I can't possibly know what a gay relationship's like, even though some of my best friends are gay. Completely, a hundred percent. No, but you can get close. You can imagine it. You can talk you to can people. Talk to people. You can yeah. research. Right. Who are you to say that I can't right. write something? And that's a th- that's the thing. An author is not a physicist, and but he does research. Not to mention, he one, tries to portray it as realistically as possible. One in pers- most cases, one person's experience is not going to necessarily match up with another's. So it's like, oh, yet, because this is my experience with homosexuality, it doesn't mean it's going to be your experience with homosexuality right, right. or what have you. You know, so I, I think that that we're writing about it says something. I, I, I think the the really the only thing the author has to live up to is make it compelling and do your research. Yeah, make it to the best to, to the best you can. Like, like I I don't mean to pick on Fifty Shades. I actually haven't read it, but no I have. Bueno. I, I, heard, I, I heard the movies are written better, if that helps you. I haven't <laughs> watched it either, but I have heard that there was some backlash from the BDSM community because safe words were ignored, and there was, like, huge glaring, like, mm. no-nos that nobody within that community would have ever Yeah, I, I had some friends who were outraged. And... Right, and the, that's the that's dude a was a straight-up creeper. To me, yeah, no that's doubt. a big thing. Like, that's something where you're misrepresenting, misrepresenting like, uh, an entire community that's actually really respectable and kind of like safe about this right. kind of stuff and then you're like blowing blowing off a safe word is rapey we, we've made these rules for a reason right yeah well, well, let's face it it's a you fantasy sub power it's a fantasy that they should absolutely have right. and, like, because he's wealthy that away. if he lived it in a motor vehicle <laughs> you know like yeah, mobile, mobile home <laughs> it would be a crime right, it's deliverance. It'd be an, an episode of uh, svu it, it, it becomes deliverance real quick even without with money. his money it's still creepy to me and I'm good with BDSM. It's specifically like thinking that you have the right to ignore a safe word that I find creepy. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's, there's, within reason, yes, you should have done your research. You should know how important those things are before you write a book about it. But that's the hard thing. That's a main thing. I don't you think know? there's, there's a good way to research how a relationship should be. What are the cues? Uh, I'm terrible about knowing when I'm being flirted with. 
you know, so how do you I write, suck at that too. you know, flirtatiousness, you know, how do you, you know, structure this? I think maybe... I'm pretty sure there's YouTube videos that can help you with that. They're, oh my God, they're so creepy. <laughs> it's, it's so not okay. Um... Because, I mean, you always get this stuff like these guys who... I'm not talking about the pickup artist. I'm no, saying, okay. like... Okay. If you know, it's always like, a pickup artist. It's always this guy who, No, I'm talking about like, those... You should oh corner God, her and get her away from videos. her women. <gasps> Seriously? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what they're always like. No, it's no, I meant, like, the ones shit. that are, like, ten signs that she's into you. That kind of crap. Oh, my God. Cosmos okay, this. let me explain something to you in this wonderful world of fiction. You're controlling all parties involved in this conversation. So worry less about cornering a woman. <laughs> and just accept that What's she's this? she's gonna be where you need to be. Tackle the gazelle. Okay, Google. Well, what is mating ritual of human? <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll come back and talk about the mating ritual of human after this break. Our merchandise brings all the boys to the yard. Go see why on our website at thedarkandstormynights.home.blog. All right, and we are back with uh, tips on the mating rituals of human. How do we do this? How do we write about this? Uh, I'm not very Dr. Jane Goodall here. I think it's so. I think they use their words and maybe some body language. So we don't bring her like a dead bird or anything. Uh, you could. It would depend probably on your audience, I would say. I think before the audience thinks that we're like, you know, some kind of BDSM uh, podcast, it's important to notice that we brought this up because we're talking about bad writing, such as... Well, I want to know how to do this good, though. I, wanna know I how was to... just trying to figure out how we work a leather daddy into our steampunk book. I'm, <laughs> because, I'm, yeah, there I'm, was I'm, a little BDSM heavy Maybe on the next reason. episode, yes. Well, it was but... just the, the, the best <laughs> yeah, way that I could... Who knows, by the end of this episode. I was trying to, <laughs> to make it an easy reference for a... How characters? <laughs> no, no, no. I want to know. I seriously want to know, though. How can I? Because I have a singular so far romance in my story that uh-huh. I've been working on, uh, in my personal mm-hmm. one about mm-hmm. space, and then I also have like you know a brotherly relationship, which surprisingly I have no brother, but I'm better at writing that. Mm-hmm. So uh, I want to, you know, how do I build up these? How is it? Uh, how do you build up this romance? I how think the I exact same way. Romantic tension. How okay. do I? So, the exact same way, except sex. Okay, so you're... No, you're, no, 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 no. Your brotherly relationship... They, sex has nothing to do with romance, though. Eh, it does. Hold on. So your brotherly uh, friendship you got going, they're going to be screwing with each other. They're, they're going to have little jabs and have little conversations and little inside jokes. Same with the girl, except he's attracted to her. That's it. I, I honestly think that is enough to establish tension. The want... So when I call her a phylaxian yeah, anal gland, it's a term of endearment. On top of that, well, be, building if you're tension, in third grade, no, because building tension <laughs> isn't just about the relationship itself. It's it's about the don't make it too easy, you know. Don't make it just oh it fell together and it was perfect because no, it's freaking not, you know. <laughs> like, no, I it agree. It has to be a little I, bit I realistic. That, yeah, that's more but... the description people have of cheating. It just happened. Because it was easy. Yeah, your I, dick yeah, just I, fell into somebody else. I'm yeah, sure. I, I tripped, I fell, and it just, it just, it just yeah. Whoops. Sex is easy. Sex is super easy. I mean, I could go out and get sex easy. tonight. And I feel like sex but, is important. It, it, but a meaningful a relationship is really difficult for for me, anyways. Well, I'm saying the meaningful friendship. The same thing that would make a friendship between brothers is the same thing that would make a romance. Is it? Yeah, the head has to be involved. So little, it's not just yeah, sex. Yeah, but if you're talking about the tension... A little bit of Madden 2018. Yeah, you just hold back the sex. It's not all about sex. That's what I'm saying, <laughs> It man. is. It's totally about sex. Sex is important. I will give you that. But it's not all about <laughs> sex. Um, I, I First of all, it just the relationship can't be all sunshine and daisies. Everybody doesn't get along all can't the time. Can't it? Can't it, though. Okay. No, it cannot. Can, why not? Why, why can't we be best friends? And shit is what shit is, and Do we're fucking mature. you and your mature. best friend share a brain and never argue? Well, we argue all the time. But <clears throat> no, you argue all the time. I but, witness but, it. But <laughs> no, that's not my point. No, because it's never anything serious. It doesn't have to be serious at all. It doesn't have to you be You can serious. disagree on things and, sure. you know, call each other's goat snipple and whatever and, you know. Oddly specific, but sure. <laughs> But, you know, and, and then you move on with it. it, it I don't think that's tension, is it? Is it tension to have an argument that, you know... It is. I th- it, well, when, hold on. 
Yeah, it does. In a romantic like relationship, it. someone is, is is different than a friendship in that they're closer to you, and when they hurt you, it hurts more. They're they're you're letting them in closer, and plus you're doing other things that you're not going to be doing with friends. You know, you're designing a bathroom together and holding hands through Home Depot. And putting balls have, on them. There's a lot more investment. Here's the other thing. There's a lot that more it does not places matter. for tension. It doesn't matter if it's not the two characters causing the tension. There is always going to be obstacles. There are always going to be struggles in life. Let the characters struggle. That builds tension. Right. but they, Even they, if they struggle against each other. It could be about the adventure other, together. Oh, yeah. It can be, but they're still struggling. People still get stressed out, and they still snap at each other, even when they don't mean to. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, Though it's we... great if you come home after a crappy day, and your lover is ready and waiting for you with a cup of tea and a foot rub. In that reality, awesome. In reality... I don't like foot rubs. No? You're, no? Okay, in reality, you're going to come home, and they're going to be just as fucking irritated after a shitty day, too, and you're both going to snip at each other because nobody oh, yeah. made dinner. Yeah, that, that's the worst when you're both in a bad mood at the same time. And that happens. And then you just share the sex slave and order a pizza. That also doesn't what sound What if bad. you took more time with the sex slave than they did? No, now I'm, you're I'm just totally being fair. selfish. No, no, we, we have the little <laughs> chess clock next to the bed. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> And you just clock in. I'm starting to not question why you haven't had successful relationships. <laughs> I think there's a solution. Out I, here. I, I you know what? I think you should just write about that story. <laughs> <laughs> I need to know more about what goes in that house. And the other thing is, as far as building tension and, you know, like the build up in the relationship, like, I think that there needs some to be some time before everything kind of becomes a relationship before it blossoms if you will yes before it blossoms you know and i think that's a good way to build tension is just to keep them from coming together for a little bit and to be honest in a book you could write a whole book about one day you know what i'm saying just don't make it yeah please don't make it the rom-com trope that i'm utterly tired of of the unfinished conversation the guy says something it's interpreted the wrong way he doesn't complete the sentence she turns his back he goes, that's not what I meant. And then she slowly walks away, and they cut to another scene when he could have said something. So instead, he has to chase her down to the airport eight hours later, going through all these hurdles, <laughs> having, uh, having to switch out cabs. Enough. So enough. But if I answer... don't do that, I can't cast Julia Roberts. <laughs> oh, please. Enough with her, Wait too. Wait a minute. Your answer is that he could have said something and cleared it up in the first place. Yes. So you know, make indication. your story better than that. Well, now let's make discuss... the story better. I think we've discovered why Odin's the only married one. <laughs> well, let's discuss why that doesn't work anymore. We have text. I can literally text you the rest of the conversation. No, no. You, 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 you can. You, you can text also make it that I need to pick like up laundry detergent like an and a gallon of milk. You do not text the solution to the problem we're having in a relationship. No. No, no, no. Okay, I have an ex who was the master of picking a fight in a text just by leaving half of the... I hate fighting. Half of the thought I don't upset. understand guys who pick fights. Oh, he picked fight. He was a drama queen. I, I hate it. <laughs> no, I know. And I, would I like, have something I'd like to argue about. He would Great. Have How a, about we have orgasms instead? Oh, God, no. I didn't even offer that. Like, he well, would come home after a bad day, hours. try oh. to pick a fight, and I would just look right at him, shake my head, and walk away. Because I was I like, I'm it. not doing it. You humans are so yeah. weird. No, I agree. There's like there's a such thing as too much tension for sure. But, I mean, I think that just, you know. Yeah, there's a certain point where you want the characters to break up. <laughs> yeah, like, like seriously, just, just, just go sh- away. Yeah. Shut my, my up, you guys don't work. No, like, not a lot of fighting, but definitely, like, make it realistic. I think don't make it too yes. easy. We're, we're, and then at the same time, you know, they're, they're subject to their environment, too. You know, and not everything just falls into place. People have schedules. People have work. People have, you know, saving the world to do. Not everybody has time to just drop, you know, into Lois Lane's office and make everything So perfect. can my heroes meet on Tinder? Sure. Why couldn't Why not? They? Starts, I, out, I, starts I, out as a hookup. They end up saving the world. Haven't read one yet, but I mean, yeah, why not? I mean, that could be what causes the tension right there. Is saving the world is kind of time consuming. Yeah, they there didn't... has to be at least one decent relationship that happened out of that app. They, they, you, you seriously, save the world, then rub your goodies together. <laughs> so, <laughs> know, saving it's the world takes time. A little time. celebration, I guess. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I think there'd be some rubbing along the way, personally. I mean, so you don't save the world. I guess all now we're talking minutes. about sex. And the sex scenes? Do you how much oh, do you God. write? Oh, okay. yeah. I don't now. Well, see, I, I, mm, 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I don't think. Well, okay, I I have heard that you shouldn't. Shouldn't write sex scenes. You should elude to it. You should kind of like work up to it, and then the door closes, and you don't see anything else. Uh, uh, I gloss unless you're like an erotica or something like that. I, but well, well, because I feel like otherwise. Uh, it turns into an erotica. And right, and like, then what book are you writing? Right, right. And it's just like, because I could write a space story. The truth of the matter is, I probably have a few characters that do it a lot, you know? Well, I, I Okay, th- now I th- don't get me wrong. Not every sex scene needs to be described. Oh, no, I agree. I don't need to describe every time like they eat. Once I don't all. need to describe every time yeah. they go to the bathroom. You know, definitely not. What but. I'm saying is, I think you can gloss and give the highlight of vaguely what happened after you've built up to it <sighs> with a little bit of foreplay. And then just move along. You don't need to slam the door, but you do, you don't need to go blow by blow of you know well, I mean, his end, pulsing member right, and well, hormones Venus. You don't need all that. Nobody wants that. Nobody I writes that. I can honestly that. say I've never read about a pulsing member. <laughs> hormones Venus. <laughs> I don't know what the hell that means. Uh, but uh, okay, look, it should be what it's Nec- Google. It should be necessary <laughs> to the story, shouldn't it? I mean, if we're going to write the sex scene. <laughs> The sex scene should kind of be necessary in some way, shouldn't it? I agree. It? And I have actually read romance, or I guess erotica, if that's what you want to call it, uh, where at some point I'm like, these people have sex too much. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm but, bored of all this sex in this erotica. <laughs> like, let's be real here, people. <laughs> but then we go back to saving the world? So that's God a, well, damn okay, it. I can justify maybe one sex scene. As necessary to my story. Oh, no, I can accept it. Well, few... especially the first one, like when they come together. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah. I or they say, make I up or something say, towards the end. In a decent sized book, I I could like two or three is fine. Yeah, yeah. Anything more? What than is this? They... The eighties? <laughs> what? Well, no, they can do it more often. Yes, do it as much as you like. But you However, don't need to give yeah, sex, every citation. Sex like bunnies it, if you want to, whatever. If it's important to your story that they have sex that much, whatever. I don't know, killing people. But we don't a lot need to read. Like, after, after a couple of times. I mean, you could cut to a scene where over. the guy wakes up naked from bed. You know, his girl's next to him. She's sprawled out, hogging up all the sheets or whatever. And, you know, he goes to the bathroom, t- looks at his phone, and the adventure go- continues from there. You knew they had sex. You didn't talk about it. You don't always have to address it in specifics. There's many ways to allude to it without just cutting to black in next chapter. Well, the only one I think I had that was necessary in my story is the ship is getting invaded while they're doing it. I think that's important. Yeah. It's kind of funny. Right. It's kind of, you know, a slice of life. Like, like yeah, damn and it. they're like <laughs> right, right. banging against the headboard against the wall is covered up by the sound uh, Yeah, of while fire. the ship's shaking. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to finish this, damn it. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's a worse. Like, Captain? Not? No! <laughs> Can't tell their screams from the... On top of sp- old Smokey. <laughs> Can't tell their screams from the... We're under fire. 30 dying. seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> All systems go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but if there's a sequel to Space Balls to be written, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> So, okay, so the consensus is writing the sex scenes is okay, of course, as long as you're not going for, you know, I guess, lighter rating. I think that if it adds to your story, go for but, it. Well, I think it can go We're not hard, talking about blow-by-blow be... blow account, right? We're talking about, you no, know... No, I think if it adds to your story, and... if it develops your character in some way to know exactly how kinky they are in bed or whatever it is. It could be as, as steamy as any rated R movie, but I wouldn't go as f- full on N7, N17 on that. No. His leather, I would stop short of showgirls. His that's leather all. harness got stuck in her hair. and you, you don't need five minutes of her threshing in the pool. It's not necessary. I mean, I, I don't think sex scenes are really that long. They, so, they were in, yeah. In the 80s. What is, what's with the 80s? Lots of sex scenes. There are <laughs> lots of sex scenes in the 80s. I don't know. I guess, you know, if it's important to the story, write it as much as yeah, you Yeah, I, I mean, that, that trumps all. I mean... If it, yeah, its story is more important than any of the other. Well, yeah, 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 definitely. Well, that's why I, I like I said I found stuff funny. I it would be a funny thing, you know. In fact, it is that funny. might be the tension but even, that I can build my story too. Is every time they try to have sex, something is something happens. There you go. Right? That's right. What the I'm ship gets invaded. Like they get into a space battle. Of, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, the science officer blows something up. All right. Well, you know what? Here's Perfect. a simple example. I was saying the rule of thumb is stories what matters, but. Yeah, it does. It, 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 what, um, now I lost my thread. 
Damn it. No, no. Um, okay. We, yes. And tired. <laughs> but we were talking before in another episode about, like, you know, use of description and stuff like that. And what I was trying to get across is you want to give enough without boring the reader. People can get bored of a lengthy sex scene. Oh, hell yeah, they can. It's yeah, like, I, I just want to see them get the McMuffin, the explosions, or McGuffin. I said McMuffin, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. You must be hungry, too. <laughs> Grab the McGuffin, dodge the explosions, unravel the grand mystery. I want to get back to that, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, if you go so far that it's a distraction to the story, then, yeah, that's... But I will say, though, I do that's think true. that action and adventure do make you horny. Sure they do. But here also, I feel like sometimes the the sex scenes are important to the to the relationship. Right, that's what I was saying is I think that they might be a good... Because you were talking about tension before. And I was having a hard time seeing tension in a healthy relationship. And I do think these two characters develop a somewhat healthy relationship. So where the tension would have to lie is an outside tension. That's what tension. I'm saying. It's that outside situations. tension is every time they try to get it on, something fucking happens. Right. You know? And that could definitely... I know how Everybody bad it is. Everybody is subject to their environment. If you're having a hard time getting your rocks off, man, that can really be a problem, you know? Well, the worst and part then, is... Yeah, that's Super cranky. If they haven't had a chance to really be close and kind of bond... Right. Oh, and man, that's a small but, ship. How the fuck do you get alone time? And No, no, no. But my, but but my point is, is that there there's a, a timing threshold with your relationships. And it might be possible that he learns too much about her. And they either become friends or he's like, you know what, maybe do, do I really want to date that? Do I want to get involved with that problem? You know, there, there comes a point where you might go too far. You might have crossed a Rubicon because the tension's been held up too long. And all, you, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, I find it best that I not know a lot about people. And that, well, that's the thing. Yeah, because, uh, you know, fall in love, being in a, re- a romance, a relationship, is, is sort of a, a leap of faith. You know, I mean, yeah, if you, if you knew everything going in, almost none of us would do it. One day, is she going to kill me for the insurance money? No, but I think that that word is kind of what I was looking for before, bonding. And that's, like, something that I feel like sometimes the sex scene is, is important to show the bonding between the characters. Oh, sure. I mean, I can't speak uh, to the female aspect, but to uh, the emotionally stunted male I can speak to is that um, the best way for me to express and actually understand and feel a connection is through a physical act. I think that, yeah, I think a lot of I need that closure, that, that connection. That, that, that's how we do uh, handle things is the physical act. And there's the whole pheromones and all that and the chemicals. And sure, sure. Well, yeah, but I mean, now I don't equate the two things. You know, sex and, and, and love aren't, like, directly related. Eh, they're not, yeah. Uh, they're somewhat uh, chemically related. But I, I think the shared experiences, right, the, 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 you know, especially being in a scenario where it's a matter of danger and, and you know adventure and stuff like that. that that's a serious bonding experience if it's handled right and i think it's a hard part uh because i've seen certain stories where the, the, the two characters are written as completely different people that have nothing to do with each other except for when they come together and it's just like but th- through the adventure there's, this one does this and that one does that and it, it, you can't tell me these two aren't going to be trying to hold hands here and there. But or, my real question is, if it really they works... they don't like each other. And that's re- what you're saying, is sex and relationships don't necessarily... Oh, no, you're right. Work. No, no. If it there was, was a sex- sexual relationship, right. absolutely you're right. If it really works, where was Sandra Bullock on the boat? What? Speed 2. Where was she? People watched that? Or, <laughs> or actually, no, I got that reversed. I think she was on the boat and he wasn't. I don't remember. It was crap. Nobody, there was a boat? Nobody watched it. <laughs> The point, it was a casting thing. It was a bad joke. Never mind. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I love Sandra Bullock, but fuck mm-hmm. Speed. And Speed too. I liked the first Speed. Oh, I had so many people loved that shit. Oh. It, it was entertaining the first uh, time. Sandra's my the shit. The second one, nobody liked. I love Sandra, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Oof. Yikes. I loved her in that movie with Betty White. And I can't remember what Dude, anything called. Betty White's in is gold. <laughs> I have no idea what we're speaking oh, of. And it was girls. Ryan Reynolds, wasn't Sorry. it? The Proposal? Was that the one with Betty White? It might have been. That was hilarious. Anyway, doesn't really have anything to do with anything. So, yeah. Um, okay, so how about showing emotion? You. Uh, <laughs> I am a robot. So, <laughs> how do you mean? Well, I mean, I kind of think that it's an important part of displaying a relationship or romance, don't you? Well, do you think you have a Describing... lot to talk about on this? Or are you like talking about like the internal thoughts of a character? 
Yeah, maybe describing sensations and emotions and stuff. Okay, like so like I said uh, before, I can't necessarily bring a dead bird to a girl and, you know, hey, I like What's you. What's with the dead bird? Well, because that's what animals do. Bring her do. a chicken. Uh, a roasted chicken. Cats do that. <laughs> so animals will bring you a, you know, a dead something and be like, look, I love you. Here's a thing, right? I killed uh, this for you. Right, I killed this for you. Okay, but we're, uh, we're people okay, and we... Right, right. So for me, it would be, here's your ex-boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I just killed him for you. Oh, you skipped right <laughs> over the mask. If it's was the that right too much? Girl, oh, I, okay. mean... I mean, maybe. Uh, <laughs> I mean, is that the modern equivalent? Don't judge me. <laughs> <laughs> no judgment. Um, but, no, okay. Uh, I, tokens of appreciation, I think, or something. Okay. That uh, or, what Oda or was X. saying is, well, yeah, Oda was saying that for men, you know, the physical activity is a lot of what bonds us. But for a lot of women, they like the tokens of appreciation. But there is the 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 love languages, and I don't know how much of that's bullshit or not, you know. Some people like being touched. Some people like getting things. Some people like hearing affirmation and stuff like that. You know, and I think maybe that's something you have to kind of decide is what is that person's, you know, how does okay. that person feel and express love? You know, and it's right, not always the same right. thing. You don't uh, always take love in the way the you give thing. it out, you know. Mm-hmm. That's, like, that that's sounds legitimate. So, yeah, I think maybe you can. It sounds very people. self-helpy, but it doesn't sound inaccurate. It is very self Well, it is a self-help book. Right, right, but I'm saying it doesn't sound inaccurate. But, yeah, that's the thing is you need to decide what type of character you have. Right. When you're writing these things um, as far as as um, how this type of character would show emotion, would show affection, would show love, would show that he's horny, you know, or she. Right. So, I mean, yeah, I think that that's something that's probably dependent on the type of character. And like you said, some of them are going to have, you know, simple act opening a car door or, you know, um, right. words sometimes or, you know, tokens like flowers or whatnot. And, you know, sometimes it's going to just be, you know, showing her that she's wanted and, you know, Right, yeah. I mean, in a lot of these stories, I don't think they they do a good job of, you know, putting it out there. It's a, it ends up being just they're just jammed together, or you know, they just kind of like without saying anything agree that they like each other, and that's that, you know. And it's just mm-hmm. and then yeah, it no, just falls together too easily. Yeah, or yeah, or or awkwardly like right. yeah, you just jammed a square peg in a round <clears throat> hole, right? You know. Oh yeah, especially with an ill-defined character. Like she's just the the trophy that that he's earned for like slaying the dragon. Yeah. Like yeah. I, like when she doesn't have any depth. So like, what romance can there be? Because well, I like I I can't feel a connection or happy for him because she's a cardboard cutout. You're exactly right. Like you really need to. I think that that's if you're going to build or show any kind of romance or relationship, you, both of the characters have to be fully developed. Yeah. Before you can even start at least three quarter developed. That. At least three quarters. Something. <laughs> but yeah, you should know a bit about that. And, and, and you know, this is something I didn't actually think about with my characters, is how do they express emotion? That, that now, is a good note. I, I like got the that. two brothers uh, in my story, and they express their feelings towards each other by insulting each other constantly. Sure, that's how you brothers know? are. Punching so, their shoulder. So, yeah, well, they, they swear at each other in alien languages. They don't swear at each other. They call each other disgusting things in alien languages. And that's how they... Helping each other out of situations. Express their, you know, how they are. It's this game that they have between each other, you mm-hmm. know? So... You know, kind of looking out for each other kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, how do they do it with others, though? You know, it's like, okay, now how they do it with each other. But what does it mean with somebody else? They don't think that, that like, it's going to work with the girl. You know, so... Um, insulting the girl is not going to work out for you too well. Well, you know? uh, not, not to give too girl. much of your story away that you are writing, but you do have a nerdier character and you do have a more... Um, jockey character. Yeah. And the jockey character I see being the more impulsive, like grabs her and kisses her and hopefully that's wanted, you know, where the nerdier one... That's not okay behavior, though. Well, if you read the room. But, you know, that that's important. You can't just... Mm-hmm. Whatever, but yeah, I know the age we're in. But we're also talking about fiction. But (laughs) whatever. But you know, but the nerdier guy, yeah, he might lay groundwork and like try and feel out the situation. You know, so yeah, they they would be one way with each other, and then with a girl, they're going to be totally different, and they're going to be completely different in how they approach it. All right. Well, let's come back in a minute and discuss how this is going to go into the steampunk comedy story we're writing. Okay. Sure. Meow. 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 In a topsy turvy world, it's nice to have something that makes sense. Meow. This is a knit, Meow. but we hope you enjoy it anyways. Alright, so we're back, and I want to know how this is going to apply to the story we're writing together. Like, wh- who, how are we going to work this in? Now, I know we've talked about um, 
Robert still being around Robert is Meredith's, Meredith's husband. husband who died. And then <clears throat> maybe Wilhelm has uh, a fella he's interested in. Um, is there anybody else we want to maybe give a relationship to? Honestly, I didn't really... Aside from the relationships within the group, not romantic I think relationships... It, but just their relationships with each other. I didn't really. I think see it's tropey anything. if everybody hooks up. No, I agree with that. I thought maybe Jennifer might use relationships. Ooh, in interesting. The you know amongst... send an agent in to uh, get in. So, well, I wasn't saying all that. I'm saying well, that maybe not? maybe she baits men with you know trying to get into relationships with them or something like that. You know, but no, that's not that's not terrible. But I don't know where she have like people laying in wait to go and freaking you know no but you might have an an agent to exploit one of the characters to get in the well group i think if anybody be hammond but what what did we say he was in his 40s or something hammond yeah i don't know that we gave him any. i think we said he was in his 40s well as an older man of around that age uh we're still sexual <clears throat> yeah <clears throat> but we were also leery and we don't put up with a lot so true uh yeah i'm not sure how that's gonna work just make her more attractive so the brain turns off. That's true, yeah. So we'll just increase the bust size and he'll not think. But so that is how I it works. I kind of pictured Jennifer as being a fairly attractive person. Oh, I person. agree, yeah. And then we described Hammond as like a short... Tubby. Crazy scientist, bearded, right? Bald engineer scientist. Yeah, I, I picture him like 5'2 or something. Right. Uh, okay. No, no, I'm not saying hook up Jennifer with Hammond. No, I know. You're saying... No, that would be too ex- much exposure. information out of him. I'm not even saying Jennifer. I'm saying she might have somebody that she could get to try to seduce Hammond. Yeah, she'd want to be a step removed, I think. Yeah, I think so, too. Okay. Especially if she knows she has, like, met Zara before. Right, right. Yeah, you don't want to... Now, Zara, I can see trying to have a bunch of relationships <laughs> and not doing so well. I kind of saw Zara as, like, dating. Right. But in a time such as this, Where Zara, people don't appreciate the tough girl? Yeah. Zara's going to be a little bit too strong-willed and a little bit too free with her mouth. <laughs> too well, really. I could see her being libertine, but secretly looking for a real relationship. Yeah, like, every, yeah, everybody maybe she wants is the, love. Maybe she's the guy of the group in that. Regard, right, well, right, I but she's a romantic crazy. underneath she uses it. A guy, it's like, oh, just get out. I think right, but I think that deep down she's romantic, is what I'm well, saying. Well, maybe, yeah. I kind of feel like everybody has that little spot in them that's a softie, you know, that wants some kind of love or well, companionship. Think, she might be a little scarred from the experience. But we were brainstorming about her past, right? And right. then why she was a, a young runaway on the right. streets, and we thought maybe she was running away from possibly like an arranged marriage or something like yes, that. Yes, right. I guess that. So, um,. So, yeah, I mean, I think that... Yeah, I don't think she's incredibly quick to jump into something. No, I don't think so either. But I think that her, also her, like, strong-willed kind of character is, is, um, it's difficult to find. Okay, I It's difficult these days. Let me apply it to, yeah, exactly what I was going to say, is I can tell you from the standpoint of a very independent, mouthy woman... It's not easy to find a guy who's just like, oh, yeah, that's cool, you know? See, for me, I'd be like, oh, you're a Kate Beckinsale from Underworld? Fuck yes, you are. <laughs> Let's do this date. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. Like, in, in general, guys like strong women until the strong woman is actually applied in reality to them. Yes. Yeah, yeah. When they stop agreeing with everything you say and suddenly they are not just, like, subservient and obedient, like, then it becomes a problem. I don't know. I... I... Maybe I'm weird, but I, I think that, like, I, I like a strong woman as long as, like, like, they can contradict me or whatever, and we can meet in the middle or not agree on something. That's fine, but as long as you're not ruling me, I don't care. Yeah, total subjugation is not going to be okay, I think. But, uh, you know, if we're evenly but, matched, but no, we're, that's cool. We're talking about the would... end of the 1800s. Guys aren't even really okay with her opening her own door. Right, right, right. A whole right. different world. Yeah, like, yeah, it's completely different. Although, I do think that... You're also going to have a different kind of guy, and he'd be rare, but he would exist in that environment because there's always someone who's rebelling against yeah. the system. Robert so there's is good... the guy who was good with a stronger woman. Right, and but, he had married. But what I'm saying right. is would be intrigued by this oh, maybe weird that's part of the liberal is woman standard has been set by Robert. who has a that's brain true. and knows things and yeah. wants to do things. Like, how weird is that? 
Right. You know, right, like right. There, so, there's gonna be guys who are intrigued by that. <clears throat> is it Robert? Yeah, Mer- but it's rare. It's if, rare now. <laughs> if Robert and Meredith kind of incidentally took on parental figures, right, to Zara, you know, say where they're just like, you know, the example to her of what a healthy relationship right. is, I think it sets the bar really high for Zara to find somebody, sure. mm-hmm. you know, because Robert was madly in love with Meredith, you know, right. I agree. They had a great relationship, and and Zara has seen that you know Meredith, while she's a strong woman and very capable and able to speak her mind, and she found someone to love her. Well, I, I think you're looking at it slightly wrong <clears throat> in, in the sense of okay, these days we're supposed to be equal, and largely are not completely there, you know, as far as like rights and pay and all that. So that, like, when a guy says, like, you know, oh, I like a strong woman, he might be playing lip service to the world he's living in. Sure. Sure. In that time period, I think that a, a girl like that, if if they're, like, oh, you know, utterly repulsed by that, if they're not, she's exotic. She's this weird foreign Yeah, link. but then she could be a fetish. Sure. You know, and that's not, not what she wants either. I'm not saying that's healthy either. I'm just saying is In is general, a, being an oddity isn't, like... It, you know, it's not a desirable trait. Eh, but I mean, like, I don't know. Among some. Is yeah. it any different than seeing someone at the other end of the bar and what you call love at first sight really is lust, but then you talk and, hey, you actually got something in common and it works out. You know, I mean, something could start off as, like, I'm attracted to that because it's weird <laughs> and end up being something real. It doesn't always have to be something that is Maybe. doomed to failure. I'm not saying that she's not going to find romance. I'm saying it'll be a long journey. It'll be a difficult path. I, uh, yeah, I agree. You know, and that is something like we we're talking about building tension is that, you know, she, you know, maybe she finds it eventually if we can make it happen like naturally and organically. Sure. But I think that somebody, a character like that in a time like that, it's going to be difficult for her. Yeah, maybe yeah. a circus. Whatever works. A well, circus. Seriously. It's filled the with. The <laughs> Well, I, I, I mean, I was saying, I wasn't saying like freak show. I was saying like, you know, maybe a gymnast or something, you know, like one of those trapeze people. But my point is, is that it's filled with outliers. People that live counter to society. I don't think she's that fucking out there. I'm just, you know, I, it's going to take a little more work to find the right guy. I think that, you know, it's probably going to be a lot of dates with a lot of misogynists that need to be thrown out on their asses, you know. And uh, she's perfectly capable of doing it. Right. And I didn't say it had I mean, to be that. I'm just saying that. that's an avenue. That's right. all I was saying. Yeah. Yeah, I just don't want to show her ever <clears throat> putting up with anybody being I agree. gross to her, you know? I agree. So, uh, but any- she ran away to escape this. She dealt with living on the streets to escape. Right, right. Yeah, she never already. let it happen. She's not going to cave and let someone uh-huh. treat her as it, less Yeah, than she I mean, is. I think. I don't Especially know. after having Meredith and Robert. Well, and her. if Meredith ever found out about one of them being real nasty to her, oh, yeah, he'd probably wind, wind, up, wind up dead. Yeah. So. Agreed. It was the monster we were chasing. Okay. Or, or it could be the world explorer guy who's been in many different cultures and societies and it's yeah. not weird What's to her. Name? Uh, name? him to meet a strong Quarter woman. Quartermain. Yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. That Alan Quartermain. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, any of these figures that live differently might be sufficient. Well, that's true. Yeah. I mean, in the world they're running in, there are more powerful figures that, you know, a demure woman isn't even going to come close to their This is true. Standards. You know what else we didn't consider? Well, yeah, I mean, if, if they're so far out of the step right. of, the, of, of, of a society Anybody else is, would be beneath them. Right. They, they, well, here's the thing. is Her love interest doesn't necessarily need to be human either. That's true. So perhaps something from a different culture, a different world altogether. Not literal world. world. Oh, for the uh, love of God. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I was, I was going to say, like, uh, let's not bring aliens in. No, no, no. Not an actual world. Aliens. But I'm saying, like, a or interdimensional uh, crystal skull people. No, you took Intergalactic that way too literally. Interplanetary. <laughs> you took that way too literally. <laughs> yeah, you're talking like shifters or something. Yes. Like I'm she gets a hold of the crystal skull just to get a date. With Indiana Jones? Yeah, I mean, why not, right? Some... I'm pretty sure he's going to die of cancer because that fridge is not blocking an ab. I don't think so either. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't care how lead lined it is. Okay, so but um, so yeah. I mean, I think that we can build a lot of tension in that whole scenario. Just having her deal with with a lot of you know (laughs) 
jerks before she comes to, you know, find somebody who's... Yeah, no, I agree. I think that there, there should definitely be a couple of, like, aristocrats and socialites that get thrown out on their ass or, you know... End up with a few extra bruises or something like that, and then that'd be know, funny. Yeah, I'll the... have you arrested. Oh, really? You're gonna tell all those fellas in your gentleman's club <laughs> that a girl kicked your ass? You know, you, you pen over to a wild west scene of someone flying through the glass of a pub, and yeah, yeah like a western, but it's it's foggy London, and it's some gentleman skidding across the cobblestones, and it's just her with her fist up. <laughs> just a fist, you know, like having completed an uppercut, that kind of thing. And awkward silence. Thanks for that. You're welcome. <laughs> Speaking of awkward silence, that was another thing we suggested, though, right? Was making one or both of your characters kind of too awkward to just magically fall in love. Well, okay. So my major romance in my story is a tech nerd, and uh, who is well above and beyond standard human intelligence, uh, because he learned from a super advanced alien race. Uh, and an artificial intelligence put into an android. Mm -hmm. So I, I can only see this being awkward. I would tend to agree. And I definitely think that if we're going to draw Hammond into any kind of relationship, super I awkward. think it's going to be super awkward. I'm Especially just... if he tries to get one of his machines involved. Oh, lordy. <laughs> yeah. He sold the patent to Masters and Johnson. <laughs> 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 I would have knew what I was talking about. Yeah, they, they were originally wind up, did you know? Yeah, you cranked them. I bet you did. Mm hmm. That had been frustrating. And then for they a had minute. the plug in model that actually plugged into a Oh, socket. those cords were huge, too. Ridiculous. Yeah, they were thick. Like, Almost as thick as the thing you should have You'd be worried about, you know, a short in that? Oh, my God. There had to have been at least one death that, like, like no corner we had to put that. Is that what you said? Yeah. yeah, no shit. Somebody had. To, I'm not kidding. You have to see these things. I mean, I I, I know it didn't end up in a corner report because it would have been too discreet back then. But it had to happen at least once. Yeah, where did you put that thing? You know, like, someone found their mother in some really awkward situation. Okay, then yeah. <laughs> this is quite the conversation. So just saying, Hammond might be super awkward mm -hmm. to do this with. I can only Especially see him if gifting is, something like that. If he has studied the art. Thinking of you. <laughs> yeah. I've brought you an eggplant. You know, it, if, if he has studied the lustful arts or whatever it is, you know. He spent a year studying the Kama Sutra. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, yeah, let, let's stop. Let's stop. Okay. Because then, I, I'm starting to bring up dolphins in three modes. and I, all, like, oh, let's, let's just stop. Just so you know, though, Hammond never takes that top head off, not even in bed. So, <laughs> That's excellent. Maybe Is it a bowler? Even, I'm seeing a bowler. You might need those goggles. May, yeah, I was going to say, maybe not even the goggles. So, I don't know why, but I'm just... It's messy. Splashes. <laughs> Eye protection. Very important. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> it's not a Gallagher show. <laughs> it is if you do it, it right. It kind of is. <laughs> You've obviously never gotten splashed in the eye. <laughs> there is such a thing as too much loot. It really is. It burns. It burns. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the wow. last time I buy the cinnamon shit. <laughs> do they have that oh, stuff that that's... No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> that is a bridge too far, I'll tell you. <laughs> wow. Um, okay, and so then the other thing we talked about as well is uh, making <laughs> making one of your characters fall faster than the other. Yeah, that's definitely an issue. And, and you know... Uh, it's realistic. It, it occurs yeah. to me that I think that <laughs> Wilhelm might fall faster than his interest. I think... Might. I feel that as well. Well, you yeah, know? I mean, he's been or kind of he alone. he may not... He may not, but think he is... Because of his tendency to overreact. Maybe so. And so he goes well, he through the whole internal... Him, he might confuse infatuation with love. I could definitely see him doing that, like diving full in. Especially if he's never had a, a relationship under his belt at all. Well, at or least, at least yeah, a healthy well, one. Well, because, you know, he, like we said, he's, you know, he's gay. Right, in a time which, where... Right, which, where it wasn't exactly acceptable. So, right. you know, yeah, I mean, any relationship he may have had publicly might have been... More of a sham relationship, or you know, right? What have you? I kind of so. feel like he would have avoided it all together. I think he would have too. I think he would have been the eternal bachelor, like proud bachelor, confirmed right. bachelor. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's yeah. what it was. Yeah, confirmed bachelor. Yeah. I have a card, you know. Right. So while we're on the topic, you gotta of, love the language of the day of Wilhelm. Um, happily ever after. 
does your romance or your relationship need the happily ever after? Uh, no, Mine? but if anyone did, I think Wilhelm would. I agree with you. If we make every other relationship not work, it needs to be Wilhelm's that works. We already tore up Meredith, so... Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that... I don't know. We could always do a Bob thing for her, right? The end of the whole story... We give her a little skull that, you know, contains the body. Oh, the, he just went dressed in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, Robert's in there. And he can just come out and, you know. Maybe some way for her to, I mean, it's supernatural. We maybe you maybe know, figure something that, out. Some kind of gateway. That character is kinkier than anything we said in this episode. Bob? I oh, yeah. I love Bob. I still have a skull sitting on my <laughs> fireplace over there because of Bob. Yeah, see, I, <laughs> I, I destroy relationships in my stories. I obliterate right. them. Right. Yes, and I'm just going to say but right that now, might be my I am own... against you having hold of Wilhelm's relationship. Yeah, that, that might be my own um, personal thing. If nothing else, if we like bash up everybody else's relationships, I'm... I think the only thing Wilhelm. that it jeopardizes Wilhelm's relationship <clears throat> is his own doubts and insecurities. That's what I was saying. And I feel like he'll have to struggle through that oh, for yeah. sure. I, I think, yeah, but, but if anybody I think gets Meredith a happily might be good ever counsel after, for him. Yeah, yeah that's I fair. agree. She's but I think it might take him a while to go to her. Unapologetically. Yeah. Yes, I agree. The I, team has to come together before that can yeah, happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we were right from the start, they need to gain each other's trust. It's right. just too new. I agree. I, I think Meredith would actually have to broach it like, we know you're homosexual. Right. Because they wouldn't say gay. Yeah, yeah. They didn't he, have that term then. He would never admit that he was anything but a confirmed bachelor. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's like... So like, she would have to, to start, see him. I know. I think that she would have to see him mooning over his his interest, um, and for her to to maybe have a talk with him and just tell him, you know, this is okay. Be you. Do you. You know. Do you boo? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and fuck everybody else. And I think that that's what it's going to come down to. If you're going to fuck everybody else, wear a condom. Jesus Christ. I think they laced up back then. Laced up. Oh, that'd be awesome. Lace? It's like ribbed, right? Isn't it almost ribbed at that point? <laughs> a lace up condom. Oh no, they did have sheepskin. Get a swoosh, swoosh on the side. Just do it. Which is so gross. I, I don't think that was a thing. No. Okay. I'm pretty sure. Like, did they boil it? it like, was, I know it was, it was sheep intestines. Yeah, it was but, intestines. Yeah. But, but did so they your boil sausage it? was in a sausage. Right. And did they sew the end, or they just tie it off? Like, how did that work? I don't know. Like, I've never bought a package of sheep. I've never so been I, in the business end of one of those. Just. Uh, that that whole time period's gross. <laughs> yeah, they, well, they didn't bathe that much either. So, uh, well, no, they actually just discovered the wonders of bathing. I mean, like, there's a whole like, like thing about like uh, the, like how before that they discover didn't it. bathe. No, no, they used to bathe once every month at the most, or three months at the least. Holy usually, crap. usually yeah. in their undergarments, like their the I'm chemise, like every pajama person. thing they had. Yeah, they would bathe in that and wear it all the time, nonstop. Okay. What the frick? Oh yeah, oh yeah, under their clothes. And then, uh, at this point, they they developed something called hydrotherapy. It was like oh, it revolutionized the science of the day, and you know, coincidentally, started learning about washing hands and all that. And it all kind of had started to happen at the same time period. But yeah, before then, nobody really bathed. At, at that point, they started bathing once a week, which some people were concerned it might be too much and unhealthy. Like I don't know how you do it. Like I've got to bathe daily. Okay, so like, yeah, bathing daily is kind, of, especially like. Well, that's why perfumes are so popular. With people like working out, like it's a freaking month. Yeah, that's true. I, I will I tell really you, lift, I so. have Spanish hair. I don't wash it every single day, but the shower part well, is still required. Well, that could be bad for your scalp, but I mean, at least well, every couple days. Like, I lotion mine. It'll frizz like crazy. I mean, I'm bald, so yeah. I. But I lotion my my yeah, dome. But there's a difference Get that between sheen. like Charlie not sheen. washing your hair every single day and not showering. I mean, I cooking. rinse it at least with water, but I mean, yeah, I'm like. Every other, every three I months. Know, man, I gotta shower like daily. <clears throat> oh no, no, I bathe yeah, daily. Yeah, the showering is it, sometimes twice, like in the summer. Yeah. Well, especially like I like to go to the lake a lot, and our lake's gross. But yeah, no, back then it was like once a week was pretty standard. That was that was having good. Hygiene. All right. Well, that's not going to help their dating prospects. No, no, my. But you, I think we've come up with some good things. They did that well. Uh, for writing purposes, just. Just FYI, they did actually wash their armpit, genital, mouth, you know. That stuff they well, did daily. Well, that was nice of them. <laughs> you know, in the, right? well, in the morning, you know, you, you did the horse shower thing. Uh, I, scrubbed, I scrubbed my willy earlier, so you could put it in your mouth. <laughs> okay, but uh, aside from our story, though, how do you feel about the happy, happily ever after? And I don't think it's necessary. Seriously? I don't. I, I mean, you can allude to whatever you want, but... 
I mean, I mean, is it satisfying? Sure. And I think a lot of people get mad. If it's mad. a fairy tale. I think people get mad if you don't satisfy them at the end of your story. I don't care what you want when I write my stories. You know, You're writing for an audience. I'm writing for myself. No, I'm not writing for Look, an audience. Look, I, I want a story to wrap up. And if that means... Uh, and, and a lot of times, I, yeah, I'd like to give them a happy ending. But it, it, it also depends. Is this story a standalone? Is it a chronicle? Is it a trilogy? Look, because they may not stay together. Good old George. That's fine. Showed us that you don't need happy endings. Here's my thing. Is not everything is going to work what? out. George R. R. Martin showed us you don't need oh, happy endings. Oh, God. Not everything is going to work out. And it's, you know, that's cool. I've obviously, not every aspect of this person's character's life is going to be perfect. But in general, yeah, I feel like things need to have worked out in the end. Or it's not the end. Well, it, 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 some sort of quasi-happiness. You, mm-hmm. you want a sense of completion when you close up. Yeah, book. I don't care if the relationship didn't make it, you know, as long as they've, you know, made their ultimate goal. Or, like, whatever it is. They're at least happy with where I they're mean, at. Yeah. The bad guy didn't win, but everybody else is dead. Yeah, but that doesn't, you don't want the character being, like, miserable and life sucks. And <clears> I, <throat> I don't even know why I bothered saving this world. The end. Right. You don't oh, want yeah, that. I, I killed the bad guy, but my whole family's dead and I have no reason to live. You know, like, what good is that? There's no reason to live. There's cocaine and hookers. And then he killed himself. Yeah. The end. <laughs> <laughs> no. Christ. <laughs> well, hey, hey. I mean, are we talking about, if we're just talking about relationship happy endings, not necessary altogether. If the, uh, not necessarily. If, if a happy, I'm not against are, it. Are but we talking about a, like the overall general, story has a happy ending? Yeah, I like think a that's general, a different episode. Happily ever after. I guess whatever. I, I feel like I, I, it really is story dependent. It's it really story dependent. But I, I am not against it. But you just don't be tropey at all. Okay, look. If you're gonna write more than one book in this series, if it's yeah, really you gotta give them a little something each each book, right? Like each story, there has to be some reason to keep going on. You know. But At there's the a end flip of it of that. all. No, fuck you. There doesn't need to be a reason. Some of the, your your guy can pop on the last page. Who cares? <laughs> you know, you could go Austin Powers, where where he where he lives happily ever after until the sequel, and he finds out it's a sex bot. Hey, yeah. And then he has to live happily ever after like again until the they decide to make another sequel. If you're like each book you're writing, like I don't feel like they need to be happily ever after with their relationship at that point. I mean, no, how, it could still be in progress. You could have like one of the people get kidnapped, and the book ends. You know, like. You don't know what's going to happen well, that's next. that's the next book. Right. But I feel like... Well, it doesn't mean their relationship's in danger. That's just a cliffhanger. It's just... They assume a, that he's going to save her. It's just would. taken four. Right, but that's what I'm saying. Is oh, the enough with that. Well, he's just a bad parent. Yeah, well, well why does this keep oh, happening to Oh, taken. You? Yeah. yeah. Right. Stop going to Europe. Well, what, what are you doing? What are the chances? Like, anybody else could go to Europe and... Well, I made it through my whole vacation just fine. But his family goes to Europe, and they keep getting uh, uh, kidnapped by Armenians. Well, what is wrong with that? I have a very specific set of skills, except parenting. Right. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Stop allowing your family to go to Europe. After the second time, just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, get, Maybe stay in the country. M- right. Install a safe room, something. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, how do you, how you don't have armed guards going to Starbucks, I don't know, at that point. Yeah, it's probably time to hire a bodyguard. So. <laughs> well, all right, we'll talk about that normal happily ever after in a different episode. But as far as I'm concerned... You don't need happily ever after in a relationship. I, I think you need... Just closure. Happy enough. What happened? Yes. Happy what happened? Enough. A lot of the yeah. characters content with life to some degree. Whatever it is. I just want to know, yeah, what happened? Did, did they hook up? Cool. Did they break up? Cool. But yeah, just kind of give me some kind of update on that, I guess. Right? Yeah, just don't end on a down note. This is kind of what I'm saying. Like we are right now. Good night. <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening. Check us out on Twitter at the Dark Stormy K1 and visit our webpage, thedarkandstormynights.home.blog. Thank you.